Hello, it's Melinda from Alexis and Melinda's Art Space. Um, today I'm doing some mail art. So very quickly you just saw my favourite gesso, my Liquitex gesso. I use it very sparingly because it is my favourite and god it's expensive in Australia. Um, I did pick up that bottle for $10, usually I think they're about 23 25 or something like that. Um, I only buy it when it's on super duper special. So just these are just regular white mailing envelopes. So I just wanted to scrape a little bit of gesso on a really thin coat just to give the envelopes a bit of protection from the watercolour I'm about to put on them. So when I'm doing mail art envelopes, I do like to work on maybe about five. Five's a good number, I find, because by the time you work on the fifth one, usually the first one is dry. And because I was scraping that gesso on with a credit card or a gift card or a, what was I using, an old gift card, um, I got a really thin coat so it dries almost instantly anyway so just giving it a bit of a touch up with my um, heat tool sorry if you can hear a bit of noise in the background I do have the washing machine going but I have closed the door I'm not sure whether that's going to pick up on the on the computer I am looking at getting a microphone so I don't sound like I'm in a cardboard box when I <laughs> when I do voiceovers but priorities priorities and just haven't got that hasn't moved up my um, priority list of where to spend my money yet <laughs> um, we all know about that so just stamping out some faces these are Jane Davenport faces um, come on a set of four different faces on a face stamp I'm getting better at faces but today I just wanted to play and if I can stamp a face and not ha have the hassle to draw it I find my play goes a lot better sometimes I'll sit there and doodle with the faces this today was not that day so I grabbed out my PBO watercolours. Um, these ones I got from a lovely place overseas that we do not mention that much on YouTube anymore. And if you want any more information on that, let me know. Um, they're about half the price of buying them directly in Australia. I, they're sort of my first semi-professional, and I'll say that in exclamation marks. Um, they cost me about $20, $22, 20, $22, $20 or $22, oh God, can't talk, $20 or $22 Aussie. Um, and they're an upgrade from the cakey ones I used to have which is the cheap cheap ones that the kids use I'd love some more expensive ones but again it's on my to-do list it's on my wanting list but it just hasn't got up high enough to get purchased yet <laughs> other things keep sliding in before it <laughs> as I always do not real happy with that fishtail I will go fix that in a minute so I thought let's not bother with the body I really want to play with hair today and I want the hair to be like whooshing through the water and I do make several of them different colours so I sort of add a little bit of a body and then I do a tail and I do fix that tail up because it's way too fat even a fat mermaid wouldn't have that fat a tail <laughs> so I do like to spray those watercolours with my spray bottle first to start with and it just gets them all a bit moist they don't tend to necessarily dry out they sort of say semi moist which is why I call them sort of semi professional it's a semi day today semi professional set because it's not like a dry cake you're trying to there I go back with some gesso just to clean up the the tail that I made too fat see look my mermaid um ate some really nice healthy fish and lost some weight <laughs> so I want to experiment with some colors that I haven't used a lot I'm finding this palette I did do this quite a while ago and I'm finding this palette of watercolors is great but my favorite colors are nearly running out and it's like what do I do half the palette is still there so I do play with a few other colors um, and I do like the effect of a couple that are coming up so just basically um, sort of blopping on the color blopping I'm gonna have there nah, brain I don't know brain wasn't with it last video it's not gonna be with it this video and we're a few days apart just sort of smudging on the color I am using a water brush but I am tipping it um, dipping it into a a jar of water off screen as you can see my water brush is very disgustingly dirty because the color does go up into the barrel but it's it's the brush I like it I just like the the way the brush works so and the size of it so I just keep using it I use it for glue I use it for absolutely everything which is probably not the best idea and here comes the yawns it's not a full Melinda voiced over video without yawning okay seriously I should not be yawning it is let me see my clock it is 2.05 in the afternoon and I should not be yawning but apparently every time my body sits down to do a video it decides it wants to yawn 
So I love the ombre effect of this one going from the red to the orange to the yellow. Not real happy with how the colours are moving. I thought they would move a little bit more. So here I go and spray a bit of water on so I can get a bit more movement because I see on some YouTube channels that they're obviously using better quality watercolours than I can afford at the moment, but I wanted the same effect. I was getting very frustrated. Um, so I add some more water, and hence why I gessoed first, because if I'd put that much water on just a regular envelope, um, it wouldn't have worked. I must try this on some nicer quality watercolour paper, because this paper did buckle a lot, which was not the best. And now she looks like she's got a big V on her head. <laughs> so just trying to pick up that colour and shade in the tail. You've got to imagine her body coming out below the envelope and her tail flicking back up in. As I said, I was experimenting, so I decided to add some green into this one. As I get to the fifth one, I sort of get a bit more happier with the way I'm doing it. It's the first time I've sort of worked with sort of trying to do the, like the hair, like she's, I wanted it to be, if you can imagine, she's zooming through the water and her hair, she's got long hair and it's all like, floating on clouds behind her <laughs> if, my daughter, if my daughter was in the room with me at the moment she'd call me silly but that sort of effect but this one looks like she's got a big blob on her head and a little bit of trailing so I'm still working on that Jane Davenport does she's an American art uh, sorry not American artist Australian artist that produces the stamps that I use and she just does these beautiful um, flowing does beautiful flowing hair on all her beautiful ladies and I just can't obviously I need to practice 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 but I just can't get it looking that way so I'm just drying this one off because I put a load of water on this one yeah it looks like she's got like a beehive in her head <laughs> oh I don't know I had fun doing this this was lovely just to sit down and play and sometimes I'm just in the mood to sit and play and the heads help me with that because I can just play without having to concentrate on drawing ahead and I can make multiples really fast this is one of my favorite the brown so I decided to use some brown and some of the tones of brown because that is one of the colors I don't use a lot um, I tend to like in this palette I like um, almost the one at 12 o'clock if you imagine that palette's a clock um, sort of the pink the magenta then the purple then the blue those sort of five um, are very low at this stage but I'm determined to use up the entire palette. I don't know what I'll do with the white. I don't get the whole white watercolour. Um, maybe I need to go make take a watercolour class. Um, it doesn't even show up in black, black cardstock, so I don't know. Um, maybe it's to lighten the colours. Like, pastelise the colours, pastelise. Maybe it's to lighten and pastel the colours. <laughs> Sorry, just having my eyes. They're wanting to water at the moment. I don't know why. <sighs> My body lately has just not been cooperating. I tell it what to do and it goes, no, I'm not doing that. <laughs> I did like the effect of when I sort of dabbed colour on and then hit it with the spray bottle of how it worked. Um, but yeah, I must try this on some decent watercolour paper. Or decent for my um, frugalness. Anyway. <clears throat> so then I decided to do some drips. I, <laughs> I didn't intend them to go right down the edge of the page like that. I wanted them more to drip the way her hair was going but you can't control drips so they dripped where they wanted to drop sorry I'm in a silly mood today I do need to get some videos voice over and I find when I have to get videos done because I've got no video scheduled at the moment I'm just um yeah in a silly frame of mind I'll put it that way um <laughs> so just working on a fifth one here decided to do some red and orange again I don't know what else I can say. I'm sort of being very repetitive. Oh, this one I decided to drip again because I like the drips. So just dripping onto some, um, the paper I've got under it is, what I talk about quite often, it's um, what comes when we go to the supermarket in Australia, if we go to an IGA, or if you go to a Coles or Safeway, they all have a deli and you can go up and ask for one slice of ham, please. Or well, usually I don't ask for one, but you get the drift. You can go and ask for individual portions of particular products. Usually it's cold meats, um, salamis, olives, cheeses, depending on which deli you go to. So Alexis and I often go and just get a couple of pieces of lunch meat for um, lunch because it doesn't, I find it doesn't last. 
if you don't eat it that day, um, you may as well not buy it. And then we can get different stuff each day. So, long story short, we go and buy lunch meat, and it comes, it, they put it into a plastic bag, and then they wrap it in this, it's almost like newsprint, but it doesn't have the print on it. So it's really nice, and I love the sound of the paper, actually. So I carefully now unwrap my meat, because the meat hasn't actually touched the paper. If the meat had touched the paper, I wouldn't be using it. But the meat is in a plastic bag, and Pam is sort of cooked anyway. Um, and we save the paper, and I use it for drop paper, and different things use it in journals and stuff and it's really good to collage with because it is so thin. I must see if I can track down some to commercially buy. It's also similar to what fish and chips get wrapped in but it's a bit thinner than that in Australia. Um, but usually my fish and chip paper is not um, salvageable, I'll put it that way. Um, so I decided that the hair needed something, it lacked something. So I decided to grab a whole bunch of stamps out. <coughs> And my stays on ink, uh, not stays on ink, um, Ranger waterproof ink in case I wanted to re watercolour over the top. I wanted to use an ink that wouldn't bleed and run. So this is a really old set, and I am being a bit of a what they call a CPR stamper, um, pressing hell out of it <laughs> today because I do. And if you're a long time subby, I keep repeating it. I work on a trestle table, and trestle tables and stamping doesn't like each other. I am wanting a proper table at the end of the year. But again, that's on my wish list. I have this huge wish list of things I would like to buy and things I'd like for the house. And each month we look at it and decide what we want to buy and what we can. And then usually things of more priority come up and go ahead of other things. You all know if I had unlimited money in the world, I'd be happy as pigs in mud. So some of these stamp sets are no longer available anymore. They've been picked up at clearance um, from companies and things, so they're quite old. I am test stamping them onto the um, drop paper under it, just because some of them are new. And I find when you use a new stamp, you need to get some ink on it. And I don't necessarily clean my stamps. This one's an Audi set from a couple of years ago. I just love the broody. Um, oh, the little flowers and the broody. I'll do the broody in a minute. Um... Don't ask me why I'm saying broody in a funny way. Um, <laughs> you know, if you're a long time subby, my voiceovers are a bit crazy and I'm a bit loony sometimes, but that's okay. Um, so that was an LD set, I believe, two, two years ago, two and a half years ago or something. So I don't use my stamps a lot. I, I tend to use them as backgrounds and things like this. I don't like to make a lot of cards. You give me a big envelope like this and I'm happy. You give me a bigger canvas and I'm even happier. Double spread journal page. You give me an incy wincy little card or an ATC card and I'll sit there and stare at it and go, I don't know what I'm doing. So, yes, a lot of my stamps are used as backgrounds and things as opposed to stamped on cards. But I am getting better. I have been told by a few of my YouTube watchers that I am a card maker. I just have to have a bit more confidence in myself. But, yes, I'm not a colouring card maker, I'll put it that way. So this one's Feathers. This stamp set come from that love that lovely company, oh no I'm not actually using the feathers, I'm using the swirl, I use the feathers on another one, come from that lovely company that we do not mention much anymore, um, <laughs> it's an overseas company, a lot of my regular subbies will know what I'm talking about, so just using a scrap piece of paper here to mask off, because I only really wanted to stamp on her hair, I didn't want to stamp onto the plain paper around her hair, so just using an off cut that was sitting on my desk that happened to be in a circle, which worked really really well. So that is the extent I clean my stamps, which is probably really, really naughty. I just basically stamp on the drop paper until the ink is not there. So this is the feather one. This one I really like. I love feather stamps for, for, for some reason lately. I love feather stencils, feather stamps, and I tend to collect them and use them. And I love peacocks at the moment too, so anything peacock I love. Um, so I just decided to stamp feathers all over her head. Didn't turn out exactly how I envisaged it. Envisaged it. I seriously can't talk today. I don't know. I sit down on my computer and then my brain just goes, not going to function today. I don't know. So what am I going to do on this one? I don't know. I'm thinking. See, I, I procrastinate too much. Some days I just have to sit, stick and plonk. And I'm trying to be more of a sticker and a plonker up. Um, as like Inky the Quill, she's a fellow Aussie that I watch on YouTube and she does a lot of uh, scrapbooking pages and she just sticks it, she goes and 
they just turn out beautiful and I find that really um, intimidating and I like to sit things there just loosely on the page until I have decided where I want them to go so this sort of stamping directly on it scares me a bit as well what if I stuff it up what if I don't stamp it properly but in this instance if, it, if it's not completely stamped properly it adds to the effect of it and sometimes I do a second generation stamp as well I'm just waffling now aren't I what else can I tell you about these pages sorry if I get a little bit out of view I like how I did the curls like coming down near her ear and then one flicking up it's just gone out of view now flicking up um, and her hair that looks really cute there are still photos and some close-ups oh there you can see the two curls um, there are still photos at the end I just realized some I didn't do tails for so they're just heads so these were our mail our mail um, art envelopes so I have sent one out I believe it's that one I've sent out the others are still sitting here to find homes but I sort of didn't realize when I did it that why have I just thrown my pen on my page oh I decided to do some drawing on it okay that's why my pen just got thrown on the page so this is a fountain pen from Daiso and just decided to do some doodling because I could so it's not a waterproof ink um, so as I was saying when I send them out I decided to put them in a plastic sleeve or a plastic bag to send them through the mail because I don't want them to get wet or ruined um, in the mail because I intend the recipro reciprocant no recipient seriously if I could be bothered I'd edit it out Okay, I intend for the person to receive it, because I can't talk at the moment, um, to use my art in something as well, not just as a throwaway. So I didn't really think of that when I started stamping and um, covered up where the addresses would go. So I enjoy doodling like this, it's fun. And this um, fountain pen, it's really cool um, to draw with, and I do enjoy that from Daiso. Dizer, if you don't know what that is, it's one of my favourite shops. We don't have one very close to me. Closest is about two and a half hours drive away, or two hours by train. Um, it's like a Japanese dollar store, but in Australia, everything is $2.80. So they have, everything's written in Japanese, so sometimes trying to work out what the, what the size or what the quantity is is interesting. Um, but they have like washi tapes, they have fountain pens, they have a kitchen section, they have a food section, they have a makeup section. It's like a cheap store. Um, basically equivalent to our, you know, our cheapy stores, not the reject shop, maybe the reject shop, but that's more expensive, but, you know, like the cheap Asian stores you get when they have the different categories, Daiso is a lot like that, so definitely Google and check them out, they're mostly in the capital city, capital cities. So that one's done, so we're just going to run through the stills, I did take up some, did take up some, oh my god, I can't talk today, I think I might have to do this as voiceover again, yeah, can't be bothered. Um, and you can hear my machine spinning at the moment. So I just do some stills and some close-ups. I personally prefer the close-ups at the end. Um, I do suffer from low vision and unfortunately don't have a driver's license because of my vision, which seriously irritates me some days. But it's probably cheaper in the long run than running a car. Um, <laughs> so I do like close-ups at the end so I can see some of the detail. So I do, I do like to put them there. So you can certainly end the video if you don't want to sit through the rest of the close-ups. So thank you all for watching and thank you for the new subbies that have come on board lately. A bit of a mixed bag here. My daughter often helps me do videos or do video, does videos of her own. We often do videos together. Just depending on what the day brings and what the mood brings. Definitely what the mood brings lately. So we do from... I'm hoping to have a bit more scrapbooking on the channel. We do art journaling. We do mail art. We do ATCs. We do index cards. We do a gauntlet of things. A lot of haul videos. Yeah, okay, I have a shopping problem. I admit that. Um, I do swaps and show you swap mail that I've got and swap mail that's going out. I love doing flowish journal swaps at the moment, which is like a, a supply album swap. So it's not bound together, but it's all loose and you can repurpose things. So that's really cool. Um, so I will leave it there, leave you with the last few photos. So thank you for watching. If you're still here now, thanks for watching and putting up with me today. It seems every video I do, my brain decides it doesn't want to accompany me to the desk to do the voiceover, but that's okay. It's very entertaining listening to me lately, I suppose. Hope everyone has a fantastic day, and I'll catch you next time. Bye for now.